My point is, the human body is a true carnival of horrors, and frankly, I'm embarrassed to have one. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times John Oliver said what we were all thinking. Sneeze in my McFlurry, you pensive bison. For this list, we're looking at the times the last week Tonight host perfectly summarized our gripes, grievances, and more. Which Oliver statement stands out to you? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Guilty until proven rich or lucky. While the American legal system prides itself on being fair and impartial, we know that's sadly not the case. During a segment about wrongful convictions, Oliver broke down how achieving exoneration is anything but easy, even when innocence is provable. The truth is, it is far more difficult than you might expect, even if there's compelling evidence that you are innocent. He also highlights how this is literally a life or death matter due to people on death row fighting wrongful convictions. You know you are on the wrong side of an argument when you're asked, should innocent people be executed? You say, that's correct, Your Honor. Towards the end, he summarizes how blatantly unfair the legal process is for the underprivileged and how badly there needs to be reform. It really feels like our system is essentially guilty until proven rich or lucky. Our verdict? Oliver is guilty of speaking absolute truth about this under-discussed topic. Number 9. Every 22-year-old is some version of an idiot. Gaining wisdom requires time and patience, as well as the ability to learn from mistakes. In a segment about public shaming, Oliver showed how people can have their reputations ruined by sensationalistic coverage. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to undo the damage, maybe because even while she was discussing the actual facts, the Today Show's graphics read, Worst Aunt Ever Speaks Out. He also featured an interview with someone who knows just how devastating this experience can be. Monica Lewinsky. Though Lewinsky acknowledges that she made mistakes in her youth, Oliver comes to her defense by asserting how those in their early 20s tend to not make the best decisions. Every 22-year-old is some version of an idiot. <laughs> and just in case you are a somehow flawless 22-year-old, Oliver has deemed you the exception to this rule. Yeah. Not, not you. No, no. Not yeah. whichever 22-year-old is listening now, not you. Not you. <laughs> Number 8. The Circle of Debt. In one especially enraging segment, Oliver discusses how the payday loan industry traps people in cycles of financial hardship due to absurdly high interest rates. 1900%! Even the most demanding, abusive football coaches only ask for 110. Pretty soon, a fairly small debt can become a massive one. This is no accident, as Oliver shows a diagram from one lender that anticipates borrowers defaulting on loans and subsequently taking out another. Because an actual ACE cash training manual for employees featured a diagram which starts with the customer applying for an ACE loan, moves through them spending the money on that loan, being unable to pay it back, and then being forced to apply for an ACE loan again. He pointedly calls this, quote, a recycling symbol for human misery, before breaking out into a new version of a certain classic song from The Lion King. It's the circle of debt, and it screws us all. A few years later, Oliver made his way into the Lion King universe when he voiced Zazu in Disney's photorealistic remake. Simba, you can't escape your destiny. Sadly, he didn't get to perform this song. Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out. Number seven. Tax grievances. Filing and paying taxes can feel like having a tooth pulled without any anesthesia. But leave it to John Oliver to sum up exactly why it's such a pain. Early in a segment about the IRS, Oliver brings up how the agency brings together two things that people tend to not enjoy. Dealing with them is obligatory, it often functions badly, and it combines two of the things that we hate the most in life, someone taking our money and math. However, this isn't Oliver calling for an end to the IRS or taxes. The segment is mostly sympathetic to the IRS, pointing out how adversely affected they've been by cuts and ending with a performance from Michael Bolton himself. Tell me how are we supposed to live without you? But it's still nice to know that Oliver understands precisely why tax season stresses so many people out. Look, IRS, you're never going to be anyone's favorite agency. You know that. You're boring. You're unlikable. But here's the thing. Deep down, we need you. Number six. Human Boat Shoe John Oliver isn't shy about voicing his frustration when someone rubs him the wrong way. 
and few people attract Oliver's rage quite like Tucker Carlson. Our main story tonight concerns, I'm sorry to say, Tucker Carlson, a man who gives Tuckers an even worse name than they already have. Oliver has gone after the Fox News host numerous times for bad faith arguments and misleading statements. And he tends to do it with a mix of both exasperation and creativity. Oh, and a dash of profanity. What are you talking about, you performatively outraged wedge salad? In one segment, Oliver deconstructed Carlson's inaccurate claims about voting by mail. He pretends to consider the possibility that Carlson wants to have an actual discussion. Is it you just engaged in a dialogue in good faith, so thank you. However, he ends things by suggesting that's not the case and that Carlson is a living embodiment of a certain kind of footwear. You human boat shoe. Yeah, we wouldn't want to get on John Oliver's bad side. Number five, things are gonna be weird for a while. The early days of the COVID-19 pandemic were scary for many reasons. One of the biggest was just how much uncertainty there was. Well, 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 um, this is weird. Isn't it? This is definitely weird. In his first of many shows outside his usual studio, Oliver expressed our shared fear about this new reality. He also accurately stated that things would be challenging and strange for some time. Oliver's suggestion that this would be, at worst, a months-long issue might seem a little naive in hindsight. And things are going to be weird for a while, for weeks, and honestly, more likely months. But he was totally correct about the pending challenges and the importance of reaching out and helping those in need. Think about calling older relatives or neighbors or just anyone that you know who may be vulnerable or feeling isolated. 2020 was a scary time for all of us, but Oliver helped us to feel like we weren't alone. Number four, what conduct looks like. Police accountability and reform are topics Oliver has routinely addressed on his show, and he tends to give a pretty unflattering view of law enforcement. But for tonight, we are going to focus primarily on them and try to address three basic questions. How the f we got to this point, what the obstacles to reform have been, and what we can do going forward. In a show aired amidst widespread protests in 2020, Oliver explained exactly why there's so much anger about modern policing and how far back these grievances go. For much of US history, law enforcement meant enforcing laws that were explicitly designed to subjugate black people. Among the many topics covered in this episode are misconduct cases, which can be settled at incredibly high rates. Oliver rightfully points out that spending so much money on these settlements should inspire some careful consideration about police practices. If you're spending a billion dollars on misconduct settlements, you might want to seriously examine what conduct looks like. Now that's a billion dollar idea. Number three, learning nothing would have been better than learning that. Last week tonight episodes are full of clips of people speaking about unimaginably awful experiences to help emphasize crucial points. In one show about modern sex education, Oliver showed a clip of activist Elizabeth Smart speaking about how a teacher used a stick of gum for an unflattering metaphor. But for me, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm that chewed up piece of gum. Oliver is blunt about how appalling this analogy is. Learning nothing would have been better than learning that. Schools are supposed to be a place for learning, but it doesn't do anyone any good if the things being taught are completely misleading and insulting. Thankfully, the segments end with some actual guidance, courtesy of some famous folks. But no decision is probably more important than the one you'll make about becoming sexually active. And if you do, there's a few things you should definitely know. Number two, ignoring the history that you don't like is not a victimless act. History is a core part of modern education, but not all history lessons are created equal. In a segment about how poorly American students are taught about history, he shows just how much misinformation is spread and how vital it is for there to be accuracy, no matter how unflattering it might seem. And it can be hard to deal with what your ancestors did. Trust me, I'm British. While some might argue there's no real harm in trying to paint a rosier portrait of the past, Oliver explains why that's not the case. Because ignoring the history that you don't like is not a victimless act. By pointing out the long-term consequences of poor historical education, he makes the need for proper education all the more apparent. Because while it might seem obvious, history isn't over yet. Number one, you don't need people's opinion on a fact. One of John Oliver's key skills is using a small number of words to make a massive point. When speaking about climate change, Oliver cuts through the idea that opinions should always influence action. There's that Gallup poll that came out last month which found one in four Americans is skeptical of all the effects of climate change and thinks this issue's been exaggerated. Who gives a shit? <laughs> that doesn't matter. You don't need people's opinions on a fact. In true Oliver fashion, 
He makes his point through some humorous metaphors to show how some debates really aren't debates. You might as well have a poll asking which number is bigger, 15 or 5? <laughs> or do owls exist? <laughs> or are there hats? Rather, they're people sticking to an inaccurate viewpoint despite all evidence to the contrary, which is especially dangerous with an issue as important as this one. Perhaps no statement better summarizes the mission statement of Oliver and his show. And in our opinion, that's a fact. The debate on climate change should not be whether or not it's, it exists, it's what we should do about it. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.